my life, I ain't even gonna front, yo. Like, I was just telling my mom this the other day. Like, it's those points right there in life where you like, fuck it, I gotta like give up. Is is right at that point is when you gotta go harder. Mm. Straight up, it's hard as fuck to do, but right at that point when you wanna just say, fuck it, I give up. I can't do it no more. You gotta, you, you gotta do it. You, you gotta, gotta, you gotta yeah. You gotta, you gotta do it. And if those who know what I'm talking about, they know, they know what I'm talking about. Mm. You feel me? And that's just what it is because you can do 75 percent of the work and give up, and then the next nigga come along and do 25 percent of the work and get all the glory. Mm. You feel me? And I didn't been in that situation plenty of times, but I mean, it is what it is. It's just. It's life, yo. Right. You know what I mean? Things come around, you know, you see it, you peep it. You know what I'm saying? Stay true to who you is, for real, for real. And, you know, if you that authentic, you know, you'll get what you deserve. You feel me? You just got to do it the right way. Right. No no shortcuts, you know, no cheat codes. Just You just got to put it in. Mm-hmm. And you will get what you deserve. You feel me? Yeah. Straight up. That's a crazy feeling, just knowing that there's that connection between the work put in and what you can get out of it, and that that could be the thing that saves you when it comes down to it and when your back's really up against the wall. That is what's going to save you, mm. that and, and failure. Yeah, and being willing <laughs> to fail over and over. Nobody wants to fail. I mean, I ain't going to front. It's, it's, that shit is thrown around so like loosely on memes and shit like that where niggas ain't really trying to fail like that. Right. You feel me? Everybody want to be a winner, but like, you know, it's your test. You feel me? That test is 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 can you get hit and get knocked down and can you get up and yeah. hit this motherfucker back harder? Skating is like the definitive thing where you just have to fail really quickly and briefly, but then you just get up and keep going. Like you you're gonna have to fail hundreds of times you to get fail, most yeah. tricks, you know? The best thing about skateboarding is failures. Mm. Cause it teaches you yeah. that mentality that you to need to be going. successful yeah. in life. It's like how bad you want it. Cause, cause skateboarding actually give you some type of drive in life, mm. you know, cause you connect with what you want to do and you get it done. Mm. I can't speak for everybody, but for those that understand how to like, how to manifest their own destiny, how to think of a trick mm-hmm. and all night and then go and try it the next day and applying that same type of um, formula to life when it comes to uh, your work ethics, your mm-hmm. responsibilities, your priorities, and things like that. You know what I mean? I like, think almost everybody who starts out skating, riding BMX, et cetera, and then ends up like accomplishing other things in their life is able to look at that. Like for me, 100%, like, mm-hmm. you know, I couldn't do a, a manual and then I stared at the fucking cracks in the, in the yard until I could manual a couple of blocks. And that was like, I didn't know what it was like to work hard at something that I didn't know how to do and learn how to do it and then get good at it. Yeah. Like I literally did not have anything like that in my whole life. Yeah. And then that, like within that year, I was using that mentality for all kinds of other shit. Oh, there's a girl in school that you like that you don't feel like you're go good for enough it. for. Yeah. You got to just fucking figure shit out it. and yeah. go talk to her. You yeah. suck at school. You got to like actually work hard yeah. if you want to do well in school. Like, it, yeah. and it's crazy because I'm sure there were people telling me that my whole life, and somehow I didn't really kick in until it was something that I chose to do myself. I mean, I was I was laughed at by, you know, skateboarding and shit. And um, now I look at it like, damn, I can't even believe I used to get laughed at for riding a skateboard. <laughs> right? You feel me? Like, how did y'all not know this was dope? Even back well, then. Well, it's just, yeah, I mean, <laughs> so many so many boundaries been broken. Mm. And I was having a conversation with my man about this earlier. Um, the The hurdles and brick walls that you run into trying to um, get things done. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of hurdles has been have been jumping over. A lot, of, a lot of walls have been broken. And there's a lot more that can still happen. But for the most part, it's like, like you, you just got to just kind of go for, go for what you believe in. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And, 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 and for those that believe in really what they want to do and, and they get stopped, they become like martyrs. You feel what I'm saying? People that really like die for what they believe in. Mm. People that really put their career, put their they beliefs on the line and, and, and just really just like be that authentic. You know what I mean? That's that's really not around anymore. Mm. You know, it's so many it's so much like fluff going on that it's kinda hard to filter out what's really authentic. So oh, yeah. I would just just be me and that's like the best person I could possibly be. Like you feel what I'm saying? Whether it's on the skateboard, off the skateboard, being a dad, 
jumping hurdles, breaking through walls again. Like, that's just what I think life is about. You know mm. what I mean? Like, if you really get a chance to see the vision of what you want to do and nobody else, like, sees it, then fuck it, go for it. You mm. know what I mean? It might be, you know, some challenges, but if you make it, then you get the big piece of the cake. Yeah. And niggas can't get mad at you for walking away with the glory or the big piece of the cake because if you jumped that hurdle or you busted through that wall and it worked, then, yeah, you deserve you deserve everything for that, yo. Did you deal with that feeling of, like, I don't... You know, it has to be kind of a weird feeling when you're the person who comes up out of the scene and it was an amazing scene at that mm-hmm. time. You're the dude who's actually getting the the you know the covers and the and the money and all this kind of stuff like do you feel weird about all your peers at that point especially because you're coming from such a you know people don't understand what what love yeah, park was like that. at that time it's like fucking lord of the flies or some shit just no, it's straight called, it's called, um, savage yeah, yeah. you know, you know it's, it's just all these boys place. yeah, yeah. Like, people know people that people know me they know where i'm from i just it is what it is i don't need to even keep repeating the shit but i there's a word in the term for me mm. it is it's called survivor's remorse. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. I fought through that a lot. A lot of people probably fought through that too when it, when you come from the crabs in the barrel and get selected to be, you know, different and, and, and learn things. And sometimes you wish your niggas was there with you. Sometimes you're around people that, you know, you have to force yourself to relate to, mm. adapt to, you know, and... Um, the higher you get in these other like realms or whatever, you get to lose touch with, you know, where you came from or people get to tend to like think that you forgot or whatever the case may be. And, you know, despite all of the like the glitz and the glamour and shit like that, like emotionally, a lot of that shit really do hurt because you can't bring everybody with you. Right. And sometimes I miss the days at Love Park. Sometimes I miss hanging out with my niggas that we weren't doing shit, but just doing what we needed to do, you feel me? Right. And I got snatched out of that because I did have a career. I was told, like, even by them to, like, yo, go do your thing. But, you know, it's like, do I want to still be there or do I want to provide for my family, my kids, and things like that? It's like a kind of like a growing-up life decision that, that only really hits you after you spent millions of dollars, mm. had long conversations, traveled the world, been back in the hood like it's just so much different like parameters of life that you have to to to, to swallow to actually have a good grip on life to say okay well this is actually what I want to do in my life now right you know and that's and that's just you know charities you know um reconnecting you know just uh giving back and just being active being positive and just showing that you know you I do care and I love where I come from and also love what I provide for for my kids to where I want to go in my life. You know what I'm saying? Moving forward and shit. Yeah, I had never heard that uh, survivor's remorse term until like a couple of weeks ago watching a movie about the Holocaust. And they were talking about how a lot of the, the Jews coming back to like back to normal life were sort of stuck with that because they mm-hmm. didn't know how to deal with the fact that there had been all this horrible shit that happened. But then they didn't actually get taken out. And there's there's a weird thing for you, too, because it's like. Yeah, you're talented, probably more talented than almost all the other skaters out there, but what is that talent? Like, you're not really, like, you can go and you can grind and you can force yourself to, like, really uh, develop your talent as much as possible, but at the end of the day, having that seed of talent in you, there's a part of it that is just random, that you just happen to be born better at this skateboard than a lot of the people that you are around. And, yeah, exactly, and then a lot of people that that I grew up around didn't even get to having something they could be passionate about, right? But everybody didn't skate. Mm. So it wasn't like, oh, I just grew up around skateboarders and that was my life. Yeah. I grew up around, I grew up in the street. Mm. Like, the whole streets, you feel me? I didn't sell drugs or kill niggas, but I grew up in the street, you feel me? I survived and it was about 10, 15, 20 of us every day just looking for shit to get into, finding shit doing shit like kids, skateboarding, rapping, um, graffiti, you know, just just, just living, you know what I mean? And if it really wasn't for my, my upbringing, I ain't even gonna front, like, niggas would be like, yo, why the fuck is you here? Like, you should be, you should be skating. Like, yo, you the Jordan of this shit. And I'm sitting on a corner with everybody, like, Jordan of this shit. Like, <laughs> nigga, please. Like, but did you see the future in it? Because nah. when, when I was growing up, I never knew somebody who was sponsored. Mm-hmm. I didn't really understand the concept of being pro. So that was totally I foreign understood to it, me. though. And it really wasn't for, until my man Josh Kalis. But that, you didn't imagine it could affect you. 
I never really imagined me making it big mm. just because the amount of like I don't, I don't know. It just it just wasn't it just I just wasn't that confident. It seemed like that though. that happened to people who had it easier, right? Like that for people who maybe their life was a little bit well, simpler. Well, if, and if stuff. you was if you was white and you skated, then it was easier. Mm. But it wasn't really about a racial thing. It was more like I can't convince black people that this is cool. Mm. You dig what I'm saying? Because I dig it the way we dress was kind of corny and whatever the case may be. But then when it comes to like the suburbs is like, is you wanted there or not? You right. know what I'm saying? You got your jocks, you got your cornballs at 7-Eleven, you got your low key like lightweight races. Like it's it's weird. It's a it's a balancing act. You mm -hmm. feel me? And some people give up. Some people say fuck it. Some people fight. Some people, whatever. It's just growing up. We all 11, 12 to 16, 18. Like who who didn't make mistakes? Who didn't? tried things out in their teenage years. Like, you can't blame really nobody for, for being who they are, right? Right. But emotionally, when it comes to, like, being snatched out of that and then say, okay, this is how you got to live right now if you want to survive and be this, you know, money-making fucking dude, I'm like, damn, like, fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But when I'm, you know, at the crib, I had a crib on 51st, 51st in Florence, and... um. I had a conversation with my mom and I was like, yo, they want me to move to California. And they was like, the shit that I'm getting into now, I probably won't have no deal if I don't move. Cause I was, you know, I had money and it was crazy. Like mm. it was, it was dope. But were you starting to realize like, I have too much money. I'm starting yeah. to become kind of a target being yeah, around here yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. I had a, I had my, brought my mom a car. Mm. Then I brought a car through 20 inch assassins on them, two 15s in the back. Wow. And then, my man Josh Kalis gave me a 4.0 platinum Range Rover, like so. Niggas and you wanna, guys were still living where you grew up. Yeah, like <laughs> yo, it, went from, it was crazy. But it was so many people at the house that it was just it wasn't our block, but it was just something like you know it was our neighborhood or whatever. Yeah. And then you know it really turned up because I had a shoe with DC, mm. and they was like, yo, you gonna make a lot of money. Like you need to do something. And that's when Dirty came in and helped me with the accounting. Josh came in and like kind of just helped me understand, like, look, you know, you got to make the move. Like, things like that that just was like, I didn't want to, but I see now how it affected me, my life, my future. Right. What I always wanted in life. And then it wouldn't really be no no DGK, like, company if I didn't make that move to the West Coast, too. So a lot of things turned out positive, and then the remorse comes from not being able to um, Take save everybody, or, save everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that... that that hurts though. Because yeah. now it's been like 10, 15 years. You lose touch with a lot years. of people yeah, you're coming up yeah. with. It's like. And I got kids too. Mm. And, you know, it's just, man, I miss my childhood, yo. Yeah. I really Because everything's so simple when you're, you know, especially when, I, when I'm watching these videos, sort of reliving at least the skating part of your childhood. It's just like, there must have been nothing cooler than just to have this fucking incredible legendary spot right in the middle of the city and you just got like a fucking world developing there where it wasn't legendary it like wasn't yet legendary we running from the cops two three times a day right. it was it was coming like once i started making money i used to pull up at love park still run from the cops they're like oh psh, this nigga they just put a ticket on my car <laughs> you dig like wow. it just got so big where it was it was we made it what it is and I appreciate every last moment and second of everything that we did because it got taken away from us. Mm. I, I can't go there. I used to go there. Well, we used to always watch the videos. And then I think in the summer of 2003, I went there at like midnight with my friends. And mm. we tried to ride and I got taken in about 10 minutes. What, by the cops? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2003, yeah. Yeah, cause y'all can't run that fast. You gotta lead a you gotta lead a bike. It's just it's. I was probably it's too stupid to run. It, though it's a trick to run. I was so new that I don't think I knew to yeah. run, and that the cop wasn't gonna do anything if yeah. I did run. Yeah, I thought there was gonna be like ambulances flying after me down the yeah. street. Nah, Shit, like I mean, we gotta get this yeah. guy. <laughs> hey yo, what's up? It's your boy Stevie Williams. Once again, thanks for watching these clips. But make sure you go out and check out the full length video. With no jumper. Like, subscribe, and comment. You know what I mean, follow. Me.